restraining devices. You know, the shoes that are, have been built are more a protection mechanism at the moment. The shoes that have been built, they make sure that certain muscles don't work. And there are very few shoes on the market that train muscles. Just, just look at that, you know, I think they serve some kind of base out there. <laughs> the tenderloin. <laughs> look at all these muscles here. What do we need? If an, you have a normal shoe, that the shoe that you wear, for instance, very typical shoe, you, which muscles do you need to walk from those ones? Have an idea? Yeah, tibia is anterior and triceps superior. And all the organs you don't need because the shoes take over the function. Uh, is that a problem? Let me show you that it is a problem. Now, this is not a leg, obviously. This is a mast. Here, some springs, four springs, and here, a joint. And here, the same thing, but we have four additional small springs. And we assume that the small springs act a little bit faster than the large springs. And I will explain you why that is the case. And that the small springs are strong. And if we do that, what will change? Look at the loading that we have. Loading at the insertions here, loading at the joint, dramatically high. The only thing we have added strong springs. That could be a leg, couldn't it? And it doesn't have to be the ankle joint, it can be the knee joint or the hip joint. To have strong small muscles that are active, that can do something, will affect the loading in the joints. The the force in the joint depends on the force due to the external moment, which I've illustrated here. The force of the muscles that are task related, and the force is due to co-contraction. If you have pain somewhere, what do you do? You protect yourself by co-contracting the muscles. And we do it for a moment. And the force due to co-contraction can be substantially bigger than the other forces. So you have to do something, A, that your small muscles are strong, and B, that your co-contraction, or the spasm of the muscle, is interrupt interrupted. And you don't have to, you know, if you have, you want to stabilize yourself medialaterally with the triceps surae, look how bad that is. There are other ones here that are much better suited. So if you just have the tibialis anterior and the triceps surae, and you want to stabilize yourself medialaterally, which is the problem for an older people, it doesn't work. The force in the joint is small when you have small muscles active. The ankle has many small muscles. The knee has no, almost no small muscles, and the hip has some, but not that many. So the ankle is ideally the location where you can stabilize yourself, or where you can people make people more stable. 
And you know what you can do. That's how our graduate students have to do that. Or you can, every morning, clean your teeth, stand, on some days it's not stable. It's always the same thing, it's not stable. The base is not stable. Or you can use the empty tissue. Everything that is not stable helps to strengthen the muscles. Let me show you that. that. This is electrodes that we have here around the leg. So we measure muscle activity and we can allocate each signal to certain muscles. And here, example, one subject standing in an MVT shoe, barefoot and controlled. And you see immediately that the control shoe controls you really. The control shoe makes damn sure that you don't use your muscles. Even the soleus is less used than barefoot. But all those small muscles here are basically zero activity. That's exactly what I said. You know, the typical shoe today that pretends to provide stability takes stability away. The intrinsic stability that you can produce yourself with your muscles. While some products are out of the market that can produce them. Let me show you a result, an epidemiological result with the MBT sample. We had 37 male golfers handicapped better than 16, so I didn't play. Self-reported low back pain. And you know how that is, no, you don't know that, you're too young. Uh, you know that uh, after a, a game of golf, you know, you go up towards the clubhouse for the beer. And you need the beer to lose your muscles again. They trained at least 90 minutes per week in those sandals. And they used the sandals daily, the average time was five hours per day. And then they played golf rounds, at least one round per week, in normal golf shoes. So six weeks we looked at. And we also looked at the golf technique. And what you can see here is that we have, on top of each other, a red and a silver person. It's the same person with one with the golf shoe and one with the sandal. And there were no differences in performance for the golf. But what was more interesting, low back pain on the visual analog scale, a reduction of 44%. Forty-four percent less low back pain than the average, and they didn't even play the game with these sandals. They only trained in the sandals and walked around. And we think that the reason for that is two things: first, you strengthen your system, you get more stable. Because you are more stable, you have less problems. And secondly, because you are not stable in standing. You don't have time to co-contract to spasm. Because, you know, you, you always have to adjust your muscles. And that doesn't allow you to spasm. And co-contraction is probably the biggest contributor to pain in the joint. 